is Dr. Carr and today I'm going to talk about thyroid testing. Um, the interpretation of thyroid tests can really create some confusion and this comes up quite a bit. In fact, I just got off the phone with a woman who um, saw her doctor who did some thyroid tests for some symptoms she had and based on a test called the TSH, uh, her doctor told us she was very overtreated and her hair was going to fall out and lose bone mass, etc and uh, that was just not the case. So I want to, and this comes up a lot and many of you may have experienced uh, some confusion in uh, looking over your thyroid tests uh, with your doctor. Uh, so I want to help clarify that a little bit today and uh, in order to do that we have to review a little bit of anatomy and physiology. The master gland, hormone gland in the human body is called the pituitary gland. And that gland sits right at the base of your brain. If you draw a line between your temples and straight back between your eyes, where they intersect is the pituitary gland. And it hangs down from the base of the brain like a little grape. And it's a very important gland in that it senses levels of other hormones. And in this case, uh, talking about thyroid, it is constantly sensing the amount of output of thyroid hormone from the gland, which is in your neck, okay? So uh, it's doing that on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. If it detect, if the pituitary gland detects that the thyroid is not functioning optimally, it'll put out more and more thyroid-stimulated hormone. So one of the ways we diagnose an underactive thyroid is by measuring the TSH, or thyroid-stimulated hormone, and seeing that if it's very high, that may be an indication that the person has a low thyroid. Well, in medical school, we're taught the opposite of, of that as well, in that we're taught that if somebody has a very low TSH, that can be a sign of an overactive thyroid or hyperthyroidism, and that's true. Uh, some of the confusion comes in when doctors interpret these tests when somebody's already taken thyroid replacement hormone. Now, I will say, thyroid hormone should never be used for weight loss or for energy. By the time I prescribe thyroid hormone to anybody, the thyroid's either completely failed or it's on its way out. So in a sense, we're taking over, so to speak. We are managing the thyroid dose at that point. And one of our goals, actually, if we, uh, if we want to optimize the thyroid uh, levels is to make sure that that TSH is very low because if the TSH is low that tells us that the pituitary gland again up here at the base of the brain is sensing that the thyroid or in this case the pill you're swallowing uh, is a good level for the body's needs whereas if the TSH is higher then that means that the pituitary senses that the thyroid level is still too low so I just got off the phone with a patient who, you know, she spoke to her doctor and uh, uh, her doctor said, you know, your hair's going to fall out, you're going to lose your bones, etc. Her TSH was 0 0.02, which is flagged by the laboratory as being very low. Um, that doctor wisely ordered the other two important tests, which are free T3 and free T4. The free means not bound to proteins because we only want to know what hormone is available to interact with the cells. Uh, and when you look at those measurements in this woman, in, in this patient, uh, they were fine. They were actually in the mid-range and a little above, which is where you want to be. And yet she told her that her thyroid was overactive. Now, TSH has no other function in the human body other than to stimulate the thyroid gland. So just because it's low, it doesn't mean, you know, you're going to miss out on some other function that TSH might have because it has no other function. Again, it only functions to stimulate the thyroid. But if the thyroid's not functioning because of age or autoimmune disease, and we are, you know, treating with thyroid hormone, then that test almost becomes useless, okay? The only utility of TSH in my practice when I'm giving people thyroid hormone is to make sure that it's suppressed, to make sure it's low, to get to those levels that unfortunately bothers a lot of other physicians. That is very, very low, 0 0.01 up to 1, somewhere in that range. But what I do watch is the free T3 and free T4 to make sure that they're in the good optimal range and make sure they're not overtreated. Um, and, and so it becomes a little bit confusing because TSH with thyroid function has an inverse relationship, meaning that the higher the thyroid hormone level in the blood, 
the low of the TSH and vice versa. But if you think of TSH and just as, as a hormone that stimulates the thyroid, and if you remember that by the time you're on thyroid hormone, your thyroid's not working, okay, so it doesn't need to be stimulated from an outside source anymore, we're giving you the pill, then the TSH level becomes insignificant. Uh, in fact, if anything, we want it very low. Now, in the future, I'm going to uh, actually post some uh, thyroid results uh, on my Facebook and my webpage to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. But I hope this quick overview helps, uh, helps you understand because this uh, confusion comes up a lot amongst patients and their doctors. And the take-home message is that the level of TSH should be very low when you're being treated with thyroid hormone and is not a problem and your thyroid is not over-treated as long as the free T3 and free T4 are in a good range.